Rudy Giuliani, on behalf of then President Donald Trump, tasked me with a mission to travel the globe, finding dirt on the Bidens so that an array of networks could spread misinformation about them, thus securing the 2020 election for Donald J. Trump. I found precisely zero evidence of the Bidens' corruption in Ukraine. The impeachment proceedings that bring us here now are predicated on false information spread by the Kremlin. That was former Rudy Giuliani associate Lev Parnas at a House Oversight Committee hearing this week, sounding off against House Republicans' efforts to impeach President Biden. And Lev Parnas joins us now. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Parnas. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's good having you. And let's pick, let's pick up on the whole idea of, of naming names. Uh, you, you have made uh, quite a firestorm. Uh, in the last uh, week or so, uh, and I want to play your your uh, part in the oversight hearings. Just take a listen to what you had to say on Capitol Hill. Rudy Giuliani, on behalf of then President Donald Trump, tasked me with a mission to travel the globe, finding dirt on the Bidens, so that an array of networks could spread misinformation about them thus securing the 2020 election for Donald J. Trump. I found precisely zero evidence of the Biden's corruption in Ukraine. The impeachment proceedings that bring us here now are predicated on false information spread by the Kremlin. Three, two. I and, and also, oh. if we can play the, there's yeah, another let's side. Play, yeah, the other side with the naming names in the oversight hearing. That's the one I wanted to get to. Did we have that? Okay. All right. So while we're finding that, what what is... What is the idea now that you have of, of going out and having this conversation um, that in which you're laying out very clearly for folks uh, the role of the individuals, the back, the background conversations? Why now? Why not then? Why not real time? Just break break away from the scene and go. This is not right. Thanks, Michael. I did. You know, after my arrest, I've been screaming since uh, on the top of my lungs to try to get the truth out. But unfortunately, I've been silenced by first the Southern District of New York, then by the DOJ, then by Special Prosecutor uh, uh, Scott, and then uh, the Republicans in the Senate and the Congress by not calling the witnesses in the first impeachment. I did everything I could. At the time, you know, I was being discredited. They were trying to call me a liar. They were trying to call me a uh, Russian spy, all kinds of stuff. Uh, but I did whatever I could, and I did hand over, out of the 300 articles of impeachment against Donald Trump, I think around 100 of them are my evidence that I handed over to the impeachment committee. The impeachment, and I would just, uh, to follow up on that, Mr. Parnas, in, in 2020, you were a key part of the impeachment proceedings. You sat for an interview with the House uh, of Representatives, and uh, I think that snowballed to the moment that we brought us to this week as you came before the House Oversight Committee and named the names, as, as, as Michael said. Do you think that your actions in Ukraine contributed to this wavering support that we are seeing in the United States Congress right now? You talked about the Russian misinformation during your, um, during your testimony this week and how uh, all of these people knew what, that the inf where the information was coming from and there was no there there. And now you have folks in the United States intelligence community saying that there are members of Congress, Republican members of Congress, who have been willing agents by, uh, of Russia because they are currently—the United States Congress, by Republicans particularly in Congress, are not doing what needs to be done in terms of releasing aid needed uh, to help Ukraine. Well, absolutely. I mean, this is, uh, you have to understand, all of this, to make it simplify, is all about Donald Trump. It's all about reelecting him in 2024 again. It's all about that's what's going on with Ukraine. The reason why all of them are supporting Russia is because Russia is going to do everything possible to interfere in our elections to get Donald Trump in, uh, into office again. I mean, it's simple as that. And, you know, it's upsetting to see that uh, they're having or, or they're using the impeachment of a U.S. president for political purposes, not for to get to, down to the bottom of the truth if there was ever a crime committed. And the objective of me coming there was to get, to get the truth out, to get to let the American public understand exactly how deep the corruption goes. It doesn't just start with Donald Trump. We are, you're, you're going into Congress. You're going to send. You have people in the DOJ. Just think about the investigation of how Bill Barr chose, the DOJ chose to use information from a Russian asset to impeach a U.S. president knowing all along that they had the evidence to debunk it prior to him even making those statements when they arrested me. 
And they chose not to not even question or talk about it. They chose to just bury it. And that's where the true investigation should happen. That's where we should have hearings. We need to understand how is it possible that a foreign government could infiltrate not only our president, ex-president, you know, members of Congress, Senate, DOJ. How is that possible? How is this going on? And the sad part and the crazy part is it's, it's one thing if we didn't know about it, but it's out in the open. They know it, and they're still disregarded. Like, look, remember when Rudy Giuliani was told, listen, you're speaking to a Russian asset, their country. His response was, how do you know he's a Russian asset? He might not be a Russian asset. Are you kidding me? We have that sound that we were referencing of you speaking specifically about Bill Barr during the hearing. Let's take a listen, and we'll talk on the other side. Because the team's investigations were centered around Biden and Ukraine, I was designated the point person in every matter they pursued. That is how, that is how I know with certainty that these Biden stories are untrue then and are untrue now. Excuse? Congressman Pete Sessions, then Congressman Devin Nunes, Senator Ron Johnson, and many others understood they were pushing a false narrative. The same goes for John Solomon, Sean Hannity, and media personnel, particularly at Fox News, who used this narrative to manipulate the public ahead of the 2020 elections. Sadly, they are still doing this today as we approach the 2024 elections. It would require for Republicans to stop doing that. I'm sorry, I didn't hear. I, yeah, I, do, I mean, you, I didn't do, do you have a sense of, you, you, you name a lot of names there who, to, to your argument, have been carrying water for Donald Trump and by extension for the Kremlin. What will it take for that to stop? Well, the very first thing we need is to get uh, rid of Donald Trump. We need to reelect Joe Biden to office. Uh, that's the very first thing. And then we need to, the, our country to wake up and realize that it's not just the president elections, that we need to get all of these people out of Congress, out of Senate. And, you know, it's going to take some time. But that's the only way you're going to do this, by getting out the vote, going out there and putting people that care about our country and not about the Kremlin or Russian propaganda into office. Because unfortunately, until you do that or have committee hearings and let's get the truth out, let's put criminal, uh, you know, referrals onto people that deserve criminal referrals that really did something criminal and are doing it till this day. That's the crazy part, that they're doing it till this day right in the open with all of us to see. With Donald Trump right at the head of it, at the lead of it, with him making statements about NATO, with the Republicans now in, are willing to not even do the border just for the sake of not giving Ukraine aid and making Joe Biden look uh, bad. I mean, America has to realize it's all about Donald Trump. It's his narcissism, uh, narcissism that he has, that he's, that he's shown. It's not about the country. It's about him. Mr. Parnas, I, you know, I, uh, I guess for, for me, uh, some of the frustration is, uh, and I think for a lot of folks, that all of this has been set in motion uh, by, you know, Yourself and Giuliani and others at the time, as you noted at the beginning of the conversation, uh, once you got caught, um, you know, then the then the narratives changes. Um, what do we do? Uh, what does it take? I mean, at some point, do people realize that they're, they're they're hurting the country and they're putting us in a bad position, and it takes getting caught by law enforcement in order for you to realize that. I, I don't help me understand the conversion uh, story because it, for me, when you're sitting there and you know you're talking to a Russian asset and you're working with an administration that is that is hand in glove with that asset and the Russians, how do, how come it doesn't kick in then? Wait a minute, I got a timeout. Where's are y'all? What are we doing here? What mm -hmm. happened? I mean, well, so uh, it, it, help me understand I mean, that. Yeah, I mean, it's a great question, Michael. But see, you have two sorts of people in Trump MAGA world. You have the leaders, the people that are brainwashing him. They're doing this for their own personal political and financial gains, like Donald Trump, Giuliani, and a lot of these congressmen and senators. And then you have the regular mega followers, the cult environment, where they're just basically brainwashed. And when you're in a cult, it, you, your mind thinks a lot different. And that's why you don't think common sense-wise. You think of what you want to think and what you want to believe, and everything else doesn't matter. And if you take a look at every person that has gone out of that cult, uh, mega cult, like me, Michael Cohen, uh, and others, something had to happen in their life very drastic to wake up and leave. You either get arrested or, you know, something personally happened to you to realize what's going on. 
and and it has to be something really bad to wake you up and shake you up. With me, you know, I am fortunate, as bad as it sounds, that I did get arrested, that I was able to get shocked out of the system, that I was able to have time to reflect, understand, and realize what I was doing. And that's why now I'm trying to make amends for all the mistakes and all the problems I caused by doing this with this team. So yeah, it's very difficult. And unfortunately, a lot of these people are not gonna realize it until it hits them personally in one way or another. A lesson learned, Lev Parnas, and thank you so much for taking time.